God of War Ragnarok is easily the most anticipated PlayStation game of the year, and where the 2018 God of War cautiously looked to reinvent one of Sony's most popular gaming characters, this game confidently strides back into the freshly forged world of Norse mythology. Fimble Winter is here and the end of the world is coming with it, but this is one cataclysm that you won't want to sit out on. Now, before we dive into this review proper, we just want to reassure you that we're keeping this as spoiler-free as we can. There's a few very early game mentions of plot beats that we touch upon, but these have all been discussed and shown previously, most recently when the press were allowed to preview this game a couple of weeks ago. Similarly, we've kept our video game captured to from the first few hours of the game, so just bear that in mind if it doesn't actually show off some of the later evolutions in like story, combat and the like. Oh, and we were reviewing the game and capturing on PlayStation 5, though only at 1080p. Now, with all of that out of the way, onward to the review. When the God of Thunder himself comes knock knock knocking at your cabin door, chances are he's not just popping around for a cup of tea and a nice chat. Especially not if you've been offing his family members. With blood on their hands, Kratos and Atreus have been waiting on Thor to enact some of his revenge. We get to see sparks fly right at the start of the game, between the hulking red-haired brute and the ghost of Sparta, but this skirmish is merely a warm-up. As the concluding game for this narrative arc there's just two games as opposed to a full trilogy, you can expect to face off against the remaining Norse gods. There's a different tone here though, and a different pace compared to the conclusion of Kratos' last war with the pantheon of gods. God of War 3 was a maniacal blood-soaked sprint from A to B, but Ragnarok takes its time. The board has been set and the pieces are arranged as the realm's warring factions prepare for an almighty onslaught. Odin's legions of Asgard against Kratos, Atreus, and whichever rebellious misfits they can find scattered throughout the Nine Realms. With war on the horizon, not to mention the pending apocalypse of course, Ragnarok's pacing is actually strangely pedestrian. Somewhat similar to how Mass Effect's Commander Shepard gets to just freely roam the galaxy, happily taking their time as an extinction level threat looms. There's an almost distracting lack of urgency in this game. That's not the only parallel with Bioware's famed RPG series though. There's also a sense that you're gradually building up a crew for the conflict to come, and if the prophecies are true, then this is going to be a suicide mission. So is Ragnarok more of an open world game this time? Well, not quite. Much like 2018's God of War, you'll walk the branches of Yggdrasil, the world tree that connects the Nine Realms, and you're visiting various hub worlds. These vary in size and depth, the largest taking hours to fully explore when you factor in the number of landmarks here, the collectibles, and the side quests. Sony Santa Monica has clearly put effort into filling out each location with interesting things to see and do, avoiding a lot of the pointless filler that you might expect in a more open world game than this. You will still want to revisit these areas though, because in typical action-adventure game fashion, some paths will be closed off until you come back with a certain item or an ability to unlock the way. And also, in typical action-adventure sequel fashion, you won't start Ragnarok as a super-powered behemoth. Kratos starts the game a little rusty, having forgotten his most advanced combos and abilities, having lost or misplaced the most grand armour that he'd had forged for him. From a developer standpoint, it makes sense to dial things back like this, not wanting to overwhelm new and returning players with too many gameplay options. And at least, Santa Monica didn't decide to knock Kratos over the head with a brick or something. At the same time, combat fails to feel anywhere near as dynamic during these first few hours, as you effectively have to relearn the same moves of Kratos' Leviathan Axe and the Blaze of Chaos. Thankfully, the God of War does have some new tricks up his sleeves. Well, braces, more accurately. For example, by holding the triangle button, you can infuse your weapon with ice or fire, following up with new ranged and melee attacks because of this. Sony Santa Monica has also focused on making environments more interactive during combat, as well as more destructible and vertical. Meanwhile, Atreus and other companion characters support Kratos in a way that adds cinematic flair to each skirmish without being too intrusive. There's a greater focus on this secondary cast throughout this game, much more than any God of War title in the past. During his old hack and slash days, Kratos was solitary and his dialogue was suitably spartan, saving his precious verbal barbs for brutal boss encounters. 
Now, as we know, he's still by no means a chatterbox these days, though he's definitely more talkative. The growing number of companion characters helps to fill those quiet stretches between action and set pieces. It's definitely a step further away from the original trilogy, as is the general change in tone. There's more humour here, some of it is a bit forced, erring slightly towards the homogenous strain of light comedy found in the modern Marvel blockbusters. It doesn't go full on Thor Ragnarok though, but this game's script is also definitely no Thor Dark World either, finding an inoffensive middle ground. Some characters will be borderline irritating with their banter, wonderfully juxtaposed with Kratos' blunt delivery, guttural grunts and all. Something that you cannot argue with is just how astounding this game looks when considering that it's a cross-gen release. Though, of course, that opinion is slightly coloured by us reviewing the game on PS5. Not only does God of War Ragnarok boast a level of visual fidelity that will make other AAA studios weep, there's an enchanting amount of variety and imagination at play as well. Sony Santa Monica goes well beyond the original game's Midgard setting, plundering the vast well of Norse mythology for inspiration. Needless to say, if you've been nosing around the prose Edda or similar tomes of Viking legends, there are plenty of name drops here to reward that extracurricular research. Kratos has come a long way since first flinging himself into the Aegean all those years ago. God of War as a series has come a long way too, pushing the boundaries of hack and slash action to their gore soaked limits and then breaking free of a years long slumber to become one of the biggest names in modern gaming. As our own winter approaches, God of War Ragnarok makes for the perfect adventure to lose yourself in. Thanks as ever for checking in and watching our review. We hope that you've enjoyed what you've seen and heard, and that we've towed that line of keeping this as spoiler-free as possible for you as well. If you have liked what you've seen, make sure to like, subscribe, click the bell icon, all of the usual YouTube things, and make sure to come and visit us on the sixthaxis.com as well. Hopefully, we will see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Your shield's busted, brother. Just keep your feet moving, yeah?